Hello everyone and welcome back to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to discuss what is the difference between task and task dot when all, or rather try to demonstrate how they are different compared to each other. So to demonstrate that, I created called a data provider, which has a method called get data async. Uh, it is a very simple method all it is doing is it is delaying the task by 1000 millisecond which is one second to kind of mimic that uh, long running call and then it does a right line of who the color is and then it returns an array of string or a list of string data and then in program so here i created three instances of the data provider one data provider two and data provider three then i created a stopwatch just to measure how much time it takes for each execution though it is immaterial for this example but i still created it to demonstrate there will be a little bit of difference between the two uh, which is not that noticeable but there is and it is consistent next what i'm doing is i'm calling the get data async on the three provider and getting the task back and here i'm calling for the when all and then i'll do await task dot when all and call this then stop the stopwatch and write down how much millisecond it took then disturb the stopwatch and then recreate the task calling the get data async again and this time passing wait all and then do a wait all on the three tasks and then continue now here if we look into the definition of when all it said create a task that will complete when all of the task object in the array of the task are completed and here it is pretty much doing the same thing in terms of definition but fundamentally task dot when all basically returns a new task and then it continues with rest of the execution on the main method or the main thread whereas task dot wait all what it does it it returns void it's not returning anything that means it is going to wait for completing all the tasks which are provided in the parameter blocking the main thread and then after all the execution is complete it will go to the next line that is the fundamental difference. Though first time when I run this, you will not see this behavior because I'm doing an await on the task return, which means it will wait for the task to complete, then move on. So they will basically run in parallel, not this task, but this execution and this execution will happen in serial. Whereas this task, three tasks in each of this execution will run in parallel. So let's run this code and see the behavior in the outcome of the console. And here we can see the time taken by when all is little more than a second, which is 46 millisecond extra. And the wait tail takes 13 millisecond extra. And you can see they're pretty much running in parallel because each one is supposed to take a second. So they're running in parallel within each, but across the two, it is running in serial because as I mentioned, there's an await here and this is expected. But to demonstrate the main difference, what we can do is we can say var tasks equal to this. And in the end, we can somewhere, we can say await dot task just to ensure that the task is completed before the program or the main thread goes out so now let's run this again and this time we should notice a difference so you can see the difference is this time taken finishes within nine millisecond because we're not waiting on this task then it goes on and then after that it starts here we are creating the task and we see it's waiting on all this task by that time the when all gets triggered 
so it executes all the when all in parallel as well as the wait all and then finally finishes everything within one second 35 milliseconds so the total time taken across the whole process is one minute 35 second plus nine millisecond which is one minute 44 millisecond in this case now to demonstrate that it is really doing what we are expecting it to do we can just print out the time also so we can say time dot now dot to string to short time string so let's do that just to see the time taken and now let's run it and once we run we can see it. all of them are pretty much finishing at the same time which is the 10 16 a.m which is the current time in my pc and then total time taken is one second and 16 millisecond so this is the main fundamental difference between wait all and when all but apart from this there is another behavior which is a little bit different between the two which is how we do exception handling so if we have to do exception handling then the main difference is for the wait all which is here it is going to aggregate all the exception and for the when all it is going to be different but if we have to show this then we have to create two different methods instead of one so i can create public async and then i can do the same thing uh, essentially and i don't have to send a cancellation token because I just want to do the exact same thing and let's rename it get data to async and here I can do two 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 and now here after the await instead of returning let's just throw new exception and let's do same thing here so new exception that's all and then we can put a try catch block around this two and see the behavior the we have to let's let's do one at a time let's not so first let's do the error for the wait all which is calling the data to and let's run and let's see the behavior so you can see here it says one or more error occurred for the get data sync and you can see that it's like one error which is aggregated now if we go back and we introduce this and get rid of this one we should see a different behavior of error so you can see here it just says error in the data async and it would not execute the rest and now now let's do one thing let's just instead of this instead of message let's do a this will make it more explanatory what is happening so here we just get a system exception exception in get data async it happened for the fast call itself not for the other call because the fast call itself has made it come out and we are done whereas if we just change it back exception here now we'll see a different behavior in the console.log 
and this time you see that one or more exception and we got all the three would have got the error and the error is aggregated now and now that is why we are getting an aggregate exception because all the three exception are being locked. Now if we want to make it a little bit more obvious then what we can do is we can do something similar and go and make color. So we just do that just to make sure that we see three of those messages with the color and we can see that error first one is this second one is this third one is this all the three calls are throwing if we want to make it a little bit more fancy we can say one two three and we can see one two and three getting returned or thrown three times they're aggregated and that is what is returned so that is all I wanted to show how the wait all and when all behaves differently and how we can use them. So as you can see, as a best practice, if you really want to use the full potential of when all, meaning do not block the main thread, then never do an await here because if you do an await here like this, it is going to block the main thread. So the way to do it is just get the task and then the moment you want the result, that's where you await on the task. That gives the opportunity for the task, everything to run in parallel, meaning the task and the main thread to start execution in parallel. Otherwise, the main thread will wait for when all to finish. And if you want to do that, then you might as well just wait, use the wait well instead of using when all with an await. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.